Hello, in this video I will be showing you how to install I2PD as a flat pack. Right, so let's get right on to it. I will show you the entire process installing flat hub and flat pack and everything. So, the distribution I will be using is the GNU Plus Linux Distro Pure OS. Right, so basically this will work in Debian. Uh, I'll probably show you the website. So first, to install Flatpak, you go to flathub.org, set up Flathub, and then I will, I will be using the Debian example. You choose your distro out of these options for installing Flatpak. So, of course, do apt update first. I'm not gonna bother upgrading now, that's not necessary for this video. I'm going to skip the software pl plugin thing because it says like, that can be done, but like, I'm not gonna care about that, so I'm gonna skip that part. And then I'm just gonna copy paste these. You, sh you should generally not copy paste things from the internet like that, you should manually type them. It's better to do it that way, but this is just for the video because I'm not gonna bother writing that manually. You, you should manually write, don't copy things from the internet, that's bad practice. Anyway, that should work. So, that tells me to restart the system, but that that's not necessary for this video, but I recommend you do that. Because, well, follow the guide. But I'm not gonna do that for this video, that's not necessary for me, so let's see. I will search for you the I2PD here, it shows up, this is the thing, so, yeah, these are the things, so, licenses and whatever, yeah, some information about the thing, anyway, Let's get it installed. So, it's done. Well, there's a manual install. I'm, I could just do this manual install. I'm gonna copy this one. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to download it. You can just do the manual install. So, yeah, the download was unnecessary. Forget the download, you can just do the manual install with the terminal. This one. The download might take some time. So... Oh yeah, on the meanwhile, let's install another web browser. I recommend using LibreWolf for I2P and... Yeah, it, LibreWolf is a good web browser. I'll go with the app image, but you can download any of these other options, if, like for dif different distros you can install. You can install whatever, like, uh, you, you, even on Windows, but this is not a Windows tutorial. LibreWolf is a good web browser, it's available on other operating systems like macOS and that one, you know, so if the, the web browser you can use it, but this video is not about the LibreWolf web browser, it's about I2P, so yeah, I'm gonna be talking about I2P here, not LibreWolf any more than just saying that you know, that can be deleted, that's the unnecessary thing. You can also install the program, the I2PD with the flatback ref file I just deleted, but I'll just do it manually with the, with the command. Anyway, uh, yeah, the ID don't like that. Anyway, LibreWolf. So this is the LibreWolf web browser. I'll do the configurations and all that at the same time I'll have that running on the background. So then you want to go well, like that. Those are unnecessary. Here at the bottom of the general tab, network settings. 
Go settings. Wait, wait, please. Yeah, settings. Manual proxy configuration. You want to use a lock of your self referencing IP address. That just means yourself. So, so the, this computer. The port is by default 4444. I'm also gonna use it for that one, but that's probably not necessary, but let's do that anyway. Then, uh, no proxy for, of course, one myself and local host also doesn't need that. I'm not gonna be showing in this video how to configure a proxy for accessing the clearnet. This is only for accessing EAP sites. Yeah, accessing the clearnet, you can figure that out yourself. But I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. You can see the installation is now done. I'll close all this stuff. And now I2P should show up here. And there it is. Let's open the window. And here you can see that the program is now installed. I'll actually put this away. No, that's not gonna see this one. Right, so. Uh, it starts by default automatically, I think. Yeah, it's already running. So you don't have to start it manually, it's already started. When you open the window, it's already running. Uh, you might need to wait for a while for it to connect to all the tunnels. Yeah, there's a bunch of statistics here and you can you can familiarize yourself with some of these options that are available here. I'm not gonna bother explaining any of this right now. So, yeah, when this is done with like connecting the connections and everything, then you should be fine with starting to use this. Actually, I'm gonna restart the LibreVolf just in case. That's, that might not be necessary, but I'll do it just to be sure that everything works fine. Uh, yeah, don't worry. So, now I should be able to access the websites. Now, I want to show one thing more. Uh, about config, there is this thing, if I remember what the name was, not if it might take for me a while, I have to remember what the thing was called. Uh, it was some DNS thing that you uh, you can do so that you can access the EAP, I2P, IEP sites without triggering the search. You can see, if I say planet.i2p, you can see it tries to search it in DuckDuckGo and that's just annoying. Now you can easily overcome that by just saying HTTP, HTTP uh, whatever that symbol is called, slash slash and then planet. Yeah, well, that's just gonna take a while for this to connect. This this might take a while, so that's just because of that. So it's not ready yet. It seems. Mm. You might need to wait for a while. But anyway, on the connection. Let's actually see what this is doing. Uptime. Yeah, what else? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it seems to be working. Hmm. Might I have done something wrong? I'm not sure. It should be working now. I don't see why it shouldn't work. Did I do something wrong? Let's see if I misspelled something. There's not really much I could do. Um, yeah, it's probably just, it takes a while. For some reason, I have found that in the past it took me a really long time for it to start working. Like, it just didn't work and then suddenly it started working. So it's gonna take a while potentially. Yeah, that's really weird. Let's try, I'll try to remember what that was. Was some of one of these options maybe it was net, network DNS? Mm, let's see if I could remember it. Uh, was it? Dom didn't have a domain. The domain suffix this thing, yeah, right. So, browser fix up domain suffix whitelist if 
uh, whatever, like it was one of these actually, yeah. No wonder I don't remember it, how, how, how am I supposed to remember some long ass name like this? Uh, which one it was? What, which one was it? Let's see. Browser. Mm, let's see, um, it was one of those types, so browser, look, no, what? Browser, suffix, what's a suffix, suffix, let's see all the suffix options. All the suffix, 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 host, uh, it was one of these, I, I'm having difficulty remembering what it was. I'm probably gonna get this wrong. Let's try that one. Uh, this might be wrong, I don't remember anymore. I might put a correction in, like, if you're watching this on YouTube and there's like the description and, or something, then I'm gonna probably put a correction there if I did that wrong. I'm not exactly sure if this was the correct one, but no, it, it can't be that one. It has to be something else, but let's see if it works. It works, at least, so whatever that works, who cares? It works, so if it was one of the other ones, continue. Yeah, it works. It works. Okay, that's good. It works. And now it also works. Yeah, it, it just took a while. Yeah, like I say, it, it takes a long time for some reason for this thing to start working. Yeah, it, it needs to create the tunnels and that takes a long time. But now it works. You can see it works. So it just takes a long time. I don't know why it takes so long. That's really weird. But there's nothing I can do about that, I think, so, whatever, it works, so, and this thing, yeah, that works too, so that's good. Excellent. I'm not sure if it, if it might have been one of these other ones, but this, this one works, so who cares? The purpose of this thing is just to, like, allow you to use the .i2p at the end, so that it doesn't try to search the .go. You can see how, I, when I first tried that. It tried to search that in DuckDuckGo, and that's just, you don't want that. Uh, there's also maybe something else you might want to do with the... In the about config there is, was that... Another thing there was that... I don't remember that one anymore, I might put that again on like a desktop... No, the description. There was that some thing that you might want to disable it... The, some sort of DNS thing. Uh, it start. It tries to. Was it something like this? Network DNS disable. Yeah, I think something like this might have been the option. So let's put that to true. I'm pretty sure it was this one. So network DNS or DNS disable. Network DNS disable. And that one you wanna. Through. I'm pretty sure it was these two. You wanna have these disabled because otherwise it, it's probably going to like when you are searching something here, like a website, then it's gonna do a DNS lookup. It's gonna request like from your DNS the website, and I don't think you want your DNS to know what websites you are trying to look up. Now, of course. I2P doesn't use DNSs, it uses address books, but the but the web browser, the web browser is stupid and it tries to look up the DNS and then your DNS knows that you are trying to search for some websites and you don't want that to happen. So that's something you wanna do, I'm pretty sure it was these two options, yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure it was these two, so this one, that one you wanna have enabled. So that's it, now you can access I2P, EAP sites. If you configure your uh, proxy things, you can also access the clearnet, but Tor is recommended for accessing clearnet, not I2P. Like, I2P is primarily designed to access the EAP sites anyway, so here is an EAP site as an example, so I2P is primarily for EAP sites. If you want to access the clearnet, use Tor. I2P can also be used to access the clearnet, 
you can you can configure your proxies, but I'm not gonna show you such things. Oh, and also with the Java I2P thing, that does by default have all those proxies enabled. So that's wait, were they called proxies? I don't remember what they were called actually. Well, who cares? It's those people who volunteer for giving access to the clearnet. Anyway, I'm pretty sure they were called proxies. Who cares? The Java thing from get i2p get i2p Oh wait, no, I cannot access that now here. That's super web. Get no get i2p I'm, I'm assuming this is the this website, like the, the Java version here this thing by default allows you to access the clearnet. So if you wanna access the clearnet with I2P, then you can use like this one. Then you don't have to configure anything yourself. You can just start using it and it works by default. Right, so now I'm gonna show you how it's, this thing is shut down. And you have to set the graceful quit. Don't do a quit now, that's rude. You're just gonna break the tunnels and you're just gonna mess up other people's connections. Don't do that, that's not cool. You should do a graceful quit. So when you're done with the I2P, you start that and that's gonna take a while. It's gonna it's for it's gonna it's gonna peacefully shut down all the connections. So that might take a while because it needs to shut down the connections. But you should do that because that's the proper way to do things. So I'm not, I'm not gonna wait for it to shut down, it's gonna take a while, but that's it for this video, that's that's the tutorial. Right, so thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe in case you're watching on YouTube. On the next video, bye.